Hi everyone, it's Mish and today I wanted to make a video about all of the art that I've been making in the pandemic um, because I wanted to document my process and my artistic thinking and I think that a lot of the works that I made during the pandemic actually are pretty interesting and I'm really proud of the work that I've done. So the first thing that I wanted to show is this one. Um, so I did a lot of watercolor painting when I was in the pandemic. Um, I was really, really interested in Georgia O'Keeffe um, or Georgia O'Keffe. I'm not totally sure how to say her name, but she is really, really inspirational to me because I love how emotional her watercolor paintings can um, make me feel. And, and so for this one, I was actually blindly painting um, this uh, and I didn't really actually have a painting in mind when I was starting this painting um, but what came out was actually something that looked a lot like a painting that I really loved of Georgia's and so I, I think this is really cool because I had an imprint of a painting inside of me and when I painted it, it actually looked very similar to what she had painted. And so give me one second so I can find um, the painting. Okay, so I found it. Um, so the painting that is uh, I was thinking about was actually this one. So you can kind of see how the composition um, really gets down to the middle here, like uh, with the bright color in the middle and the birds kind of directing towards that um, landscape and these two hills going towards the middle of the composition. And just to show you kind of my painting again, um, you can see how I took the idea to similarly gather the eye towards the middle in this purple kind of like concentrated area. And um, I just think that I love this piece so much because it's really an ode to Georgia and I love Georgia. So um, this is actually the book that I have of hers that um, inspired me a lot during the pandemic. And it's Giorgio Cafe, <laughs> Giorgio O'Keefe, um, art, and, art and Letters. And so I didn't actually read a lot of it. I mostly used it as a visual reference, but I truly, truly recommend this book if you're into Georgia O'Keefe. Um, there's a lot of amazing paintings of hers that I love inside this book. And so I think that um, if you're really a big fan um, and you draw inspiration from her like me, then I highly recommend that book. So um, the next thing that I wanted to show y'all um, is actually something that I um, made that I'm uh, pretty proud of that I, it's um, this piece that I was called Music Makes Me Feel Good. And so um, this piece is actually inspired by when I felt really depressed during the pandemic, um, when I was living with my partner at the time and I was feeling just really stuck and bored and depressed. Um, it was a really difficult time. Um, I felt like music was something that actually just made me feel really good like I don't know listening to music was something that helped me get through the day and helped me get through finishing some work that I had to do because at the time I was working from home and um, day to day it felt kind of difficult sometimes to focus um, so this was something that I painted um, that is uh, very specific to kind of that experience um, and I think what's special about this uh, piece is that I wanted to capture both English and Chinese part of me inside this work. Um, so you can see that I actually have like a little bit of calligraphy um, here and here uh, that uh, shows kind of the side of me where I first learned calligraphy when I was at Nam Q, which is a Chinese school in San Francisco. And it was a really difficult time for me um, because I felt like uh, as a child I wanted to just spend time at home and my Sunday, like my whole Sunday was basically gone to Chinese school because um, we would have to wake up and by the time it's 12 o'clock um, 
that's when school started and school ended at three and so my whole day was basically training school and so um, the one saving grace about Chinese school is that my mom signed us up for art classes um, Chinese art classes and um, I love Chinese art classes because you know for me I love using a pencil and paper and so something that was really special for me was actually getting to learn how to paint not paint, but um, write Chinese letters using uh, calligraphy. And um, so in this piece, I um, wanted to capture both parts of me, um, both English and Chinese. And also you can see I use a lot of watercolor still um, and uh, micron pen, um, which are two mediums that I really love. And um, yeah, I was just really inspired by feeling happy with music throughout the pandemic. And, and um, this drip, I think, is something that I draw a lot because I was really inspired by Harry Potter's, like, wa one time I was watching Harry Potter um, with my friend, uh, the first movie, and um, seeing the cake that uh, Dumbledore gave Harry, like, in the time when Harry was, like, really depressed and sad that his parents, like, just died. Um, I just remember the cake looking like really drippy and like uh, I I don't know why it still stuck with me um, one thing that was my friend was like oh maybe it's like the acid drip of society and I was like you know that kind of really resonates with me like for some reason like I feel like a lot of parts of society acid drip onto us and um, it's just a motif that I have in my art so yeah. Um, the next piece that I wanted to show you is inspired by another artist that I really admire called, um, his name is Sol LeWitt. And um, so the story is that uh, when I was um, in architecture class at Smith, I um, did this project where uh, we had to design a building in, uh, for the campus uh, using um, for it was like drawing inspiration from ecological like uh, aspects so our assignment was to go onto campus which is a huge botanical garden and um, in that garden uh, find take a picture in nature and um, after you take a picture in nature um, you were to choose elements of that nature that really stood out to you to design a building and so I loved this assignment because I thought it was so interesting that we can take um, inspiration from nature and turn it in and try to extract the ideas to bring us into um, something that we can use in design and uh, exactly also design for campus. And so I thought I thought that was really cool. And so what I ended up doing was um, hold on. So, um, hey, I'm back. Um, I just wanted to show you. So this is the picture that I took um, when I was at Smith. And um, I, I think you can kind of see how here there's like really cool little like marks where it's like a dot and then there's like lines coming out of it. Um, and this was just taken in the botanical garden at Smith. And so the concept that I got from my architecture teacher um, shout out to my architecture teacher um if you're watching this i love you thank you so much for you know your influence in my life um i extracted um that idea and i actually came up with this drawing and so um this was inspired by some conversations with um my teacher at the time um she introduced me to soul lewitt actually and she was the one that was like oh like you know you should really look into soul lewitt because he has these works where he draws 50 points randomly on the screen or i mean on the piece of paper and then connects every single one of those dots and so after um like researching solo it this is the first time i had ever seen his work or heard of him i thought it was so cool and i decided to model my building after that and so um after i did that drawing uh, the next step was actually to make a 3d model inspired by that drawing and so i don't have the 3d model with me anymore because um i have thrown it away by the end um and you know graduating and stuff it was difficult um but uh it was a 3d model that was um similar to kind of the drawing in that I had little spokes um, coming out from centerpieces 
and um, but what's cool is that I actually have a drawing of the of the uh, model that I made. So um, this is the drawing of the model. So it looks a little messy um, because I brought this out from Smith and I had to roll this piece of paper up. But you can kind of see how um, this model looked uh, when it was a model. Um, it was like a conglomeration of really thin poly, I don't know, polyethylene or something kind of sticks. And um, so what I made was kind of like this like 3D rendition, um, hexagonal rendition of my drawing. And what we did in architecture class was we did um, kind of like those, what architects do, like uh, they like do that like measuring thing where they measure from like 2D into 3D and they like kind of draw perspective drawing. And so this was, um, I don't think you can really see it that well, but basically what happens was um, in order to go from like a top view of the model to a side view of the model, you would um, first draw the bottom of uh, the top view. So this is like a top view of my model. And then what we did was draw lines to every single point that goes up, um, like from the baseline of the floor to the top of the model. <clears throat> And you measure that height and then you draw uh, the line um, down to like the where the model actually is so this is actually a rendition of like how tall my model was so you can kind of see um, I'm not sure the lighting is like kind of bad but um, you can tell that it was like this tall um, so anyway that's a really long segue into this <laughs> Um, and that was a very long segue actually, but I just want to let you guys know because there's a lot of story to my work and there's a lot of thought behind it and I really wanted to share it because um, I feel like this is something that I've kept to myself and I think it's really important for me to share it with you. And so, um, yes, yeah, so which brings me down to this. Um, so I made this actually for my friend Xu Ying. Shout out to Xu Ying, um, but I didn't give it to her because I forgot to give it to her when she, before she left, and so I'm waiting for her to come back. Uh, and when she comes back, I will give this to her. But so uh, what happened here was I took this similar idea where I plotted like random lines, and then I just started connecting the dots. So I just started going like, huh, like what will happen if what, what kind of shapes will I see? Um, because that's kind of what I did with um, my project in architecture. Um, so, uh, what happened here was that, like, I ended up just, like, using really colorful rainbow colors, which is kind of, like, part of my personality, honestly, and, um, colored that in, and I think, um, I really love this because it includes my love for micron pens and watercolor together, and I love, um, kind of, like, the little heart that I put in the middle just for her, and, um, it's something that I can't wait to give her when, um, she gets back. Oh, and one last thing I wanted to add about this actually was that um, what happens was you can kind of see there's like a hexagonal shape and um, that's what I mean by like I drew like the, the lines and the algorithm was to actually look at kind of what shape comes out of the random lines and um, outline that. And so that's what I did here. You can kind of see it's like a little hexagonal thing. <clears throat> yeah. And so um, that's all I wanted to say for uh, today. I just wanted to show three pieces of mine that I think were um, instrumental and uh, in my work. And, um, and I have a few more works in the future that I would love to share with y'all. And so let me know in the comments uh, what you think. And um, if you want to um, commission anything or if you want to purchase any of my works, please let me know. Um, Obviously, I make this stuff out of love out for myself and interest, and um, I don't have any intentions of really making this my life, um, but I feel like it is a big part of my life, and I feel like it is a big um, part of who I am, and I am really interested in art and enjoying the process of making art and drawing from different influences. So. Um, just really appreciate you sharing my work and if you like it, let me know. Um, that's all for now. Thank you. Bye!